Hi friends, my name is host Eric. I'm the host of Talking with Famous People, a debate coach, philosopher, slash typologist. And I want to quickly go over this issue of free will versus determinism and resolve the matter very clearly in a short order without a lot of rigmarole roll or nonsense, okay? The thing is, a lot there's so many hours and hours of philosophical discussion, either written or said, about the subject, but it's really very straightforward. Go ahead. And it uh, should only take a second to understand it in full. So determinists will tell you that somehow the future is predetermined because people are responsive ultimately to the various stimuli that occur to them in ways that they ultimately can't really control. So if I ask you to think of a major city, whatever pops into your head is not something that you can will, right? It just occurs. You may be able to willfully choose between options that do pop into your head but you can't choose which options pop into your head. Okay, well that that's the case, but that's that's representative of how different kinds of attention work, and not ra and rather than anything implicit to reality itself or being. So the point is this: if you wanted to be a determinist and say that nobody really acts freely, that everybody is simply responding to the various stimuli in their lives, then the first thing you'd need to do to make that point would be to establish a criterion by which free will could be exemplified. So if our will were free, how would it look different from our current reality? Or come up with a reality in which free will does exemplify? Now, this is not something that people who argue the determinist position ever really consider, but if they don't have a clear understanding of what is missing, because determinism is not so much the argument that something is a certain way as that something else is missing, this presumption of free will that we have choice and our independently express our agency without, uh, and are therefore responsible for our actions. That this, uh, this, this thing is missing, is what determinism is saying. But it, unless you can point to what it would look like if it weren't missing, then it's not really possible to claim that it is missing, right? Well, what's missing? So the thing is, the problem that determinism generally runs into immediately is it fails to establish a criterion by which it could be falsified. If, in other words, if there were a reality that falsified the statements of determinism, what would that reality look like? So then, two, let's try the other kind of thought experiment. What would it look like if we did have free will? And the answer, there's two key components here that would be in place that we can assume would be some indication of freedom of will. A, degrees of freedom. So is it the case that people act more or less freely? In other words, can I do something that I choose to do of my own free will and that be different in, in some fashion of than being locked in a cage and wanting to get out but being unable to, staying in the cage in against my own wishes? That would be a limiting my capacity to engage freely. So we do see that there are different degrees of freedom. Sometimes I do something because I want to. Sometimes I do something because I feel obligated to or have to. It's on a schedule or whatever. Um, the other thing, and that would not in and of itself alone be sufficient to establish free will because if it was just an experiential ride, then that wouldn't indicate anything about the freedom of your will so much as the freedom of your response, right? Like I have the freedom to respond to differently to different sort of situations and I have the freedom to uh, mitigate some of my responses potentially like uh, I don't want to see this close my eyes but there's an additional thing that would need to happen then if we wanted to establish free will which is capacity to act after consideration we need to be able to conditionally consider perspective actions and alternate perspective actions and choose one of them so if you have those two components the fact that the capacity to make choice, which is which is established conditionally first, and you've got the ability to demonstrate that varying behaviors and actions are understood subjectively as more or less free, then that would seem to meet the criterion, the criteria you'd need to meet to establish that, that you people did in fact have free will in any meaningful sense of the word. So we could say, well, what it would look like if we didn't have free will, unlike the determinists who can't do the same thing, right? If we didn't have free will, it would look like <clears throat> we were in a reality of 
of which allowed us no proactive proactivity no no consideration of options we just get continually pushed from one option to another and just experience it um and the put and the determinants would say well you are it is that that way except it's not like i'm not experiencing something right now i'm creating information i'm putting it out there i'm explaining to people why determinism is nonsense and my choice to do so is a choice that links to things that occurred around me for example it links to me just listening to an earlier live stream i made where i discussed this subject in the less clear and concise fashion and i thought this would be a good video topic but that doesn't mean that that experience caused me to do this it was a matter in consideration uh, it was it put on my plate in front of me one of a number of different possible topics and issues that i when i was listening to that that i then choose to that i maybe reflexively am going to convert into some sort of more putting of information but which information i put is uh going to be determined by some conditionality work do i really want to do this is, is what i'm thinking about really making sense i'm going to think about it before taking action that would be con considered free will in any meaningful sense but most importantly, number three, the reason determinism is complete bullshit is it says that what happens is predetermined in somehow, except definitionally, the future hasn't happened yet. So it can't be determined already. And this is something people don't get is you have to live with the implications of that reality. The definition of the future is that which has not happened yet. Since it hasn't happened yet, we can speculate about it. We can make predictions about it, but it's not already determined, so it can't be predetermined. When we say in in the modern world, in like regular life, that something's predetermined, let's say uh, a, a wrestling match, a professional wrestling match, the outcome is predetermined. It's scripted out ahead of time. Well, what we really mean is that we're being presented something that's intended to look as though it weren't predetermined by a script, but that is instead uh, that the this this character in this play never actually had a chance to win the the wrestling match. It's not a real sporting event, right? When we talk about something being predetermined like that, what we mean is, um, from my perspective, the outcome was not attained honestly. By, uh, by allowing both parties to compete in a zero-sum fashion to determine the outcome based on each of their own free will, but rather that they were adhering to the script uh, that represented somebody else's will regarding what happens. So, in other words, those wrestlers were in exercising less free will in that capacity than if it had been a real boxing match or something or a real uh, MMA fight, in which case they would both use all of their free will to adversarially attempt to win the match. So the point is, is it the case that the outcome of the wrestling match was predetermined in a philosophical sense? No, it was they they hoped everything would go as planned, and it did. <laughs> that, that's how that plays out. So hopefully this resolves the question of determinism and free will. Determinism is absolutely nonsense. In reality, humanity exists as independent renderers of a very chaotic system of many dynamic elements. Um, and, and the very definition of agency, in fact, is the capacity, at least sentient agency, is the capacity to um, adapt to to purposefully and meaningfully adapt to stimuli in ways that are suitable to the self. The fact that one chooses to have some sort of prime directive, that is to say, narrow the gap between one's expectations and one's reality is the prime directive ultimately, doesn't mean that they have no freedom in how they will things to either uphold or more successfully or less successfully uh, that prime directive. And most importantly, I guess, 
the takeaway is if you can't tell me what it would look like without free will and if you can't tell me what it would look like with free will then you can't tell me there isn't any free will if you can't establish if you can't say this reality has no free will because it lacks meow that this other hypothetical reality would have then you're not saying anything and that's the true of almost all every determinist and almost every every argument about this matter so for those of you who still believe in a sort of uh, causal determinism, rewatch this video until you learn how wrong you are and stop thinking that stupid stuff.